a bit of an over. Oh, brilliant. Uh, glad you remember that because I knew I was going to forget <laughs> Uh, so welcome everyone, I'm Dr Justin Ryan, I'm the Director of Public Health um, and I've been asked to lead as uh, Senior Director uh, for the Big Creative Conversation. Uh, might strike some of you as a bit odd about uh, why is Director of Public Health leading this piece of work um, and I've been asked by Deborah Cabman, the Chief Exec, to take the lead on this because um, there was some real reflection that through COVID, we've done so much in terms of engaging with communities in different ways uh, and really try to bring a, a new energy and a different energy to having uh, co-production, co-creation conversations um, that she wanted me to take the lead on this to help bring that energy and passion to start the journey of creating uh, the new uh, creativity strategy for the city, which we'll be talking with you a bit about uh, later on in the session. So that's why you've got me. Um, and uh, I've been working with him and his, his team, small team, and also bringing in colleagues from uh, my wider public health team to help support the conversation. So there's been a huge amount of energy uh, and momentum. I'm really grateful to uh, some of our external stakeholders and partners, particularly a, a shout out to Erica and the Culture Central team who've been really uh, helping us on this and also to uh, Zach and Sarah at the Museums Trust um, who've also been giving some input and advice as we've started to shape the approach for what I hope will be a really exciting month of activity uh, where we start to shape a vision for a creative Birmingham for the future. So without further ado, I know Councillor Francis would have really wanted to be with us today. Unfortunately, she has to sit on an interview panel and she did try and get out of it, but um, as you can understand that the interview panels for senior officers are kind of locked in. Uh, so she wasn't able to delegate it, but she has recorded uh, a video for us. Uh, so I will just uh, mute myself for a second, hand over to Saeed to hopefully be able to play the video uh, with your sound on, uh, and then we'll move on in the agenda. So if you go on to the next one side, make sure you've got your sound on before you click on the embedded video. No sound coming through yet. Okay, well, I suggest, Side, what we do is we'll move on to the presentation. And if I can ask on my team in the background to have a play uh, offline on how can we make sure we get the sound from Councillor Francis. Uh, so we'll be able to share that before the close of the session today. Um, I would share, I mean, if you could hear it, you will hear the, the um, passion that she brings to portfolio. Many of you, I think, know her. Uh, from where her previous portfolio and this is something that she is uh, very personally committed to and I think um, she has we have touch base around what we're doing and the thinking and the planning and she's really excited and I know we'll want to be part of some of those conversations that we're planning over June um, so this won't be the only time you'll get to engage with her she will I think be joining us out on the road and in some of the virtual um, conversations that we're planning to have. So if we move on the side into the, uh, the next bit, which just gives us a bit of a kind of setting the context. Um, and I'm not gonna dwell on this in too much detail because you know, many of you on the call are coming from the cultural sector. You know it well, you know it much better than I do. So this is not, you know, I don't want to be teaching you stuff you already know, but I do want to kind of emphasize I think the opportunity that the creativity language and this um, space and time give us to reframe a bit the position of the creative arts, culture um, and heritage in the city of Birmingham. And 
thinking about how we can frame that to a better, more sustainable future. And I'm sure when Simon shares with us later some of the role of the council, you know, we're all aware of the cuts in funding, the challenges we have um, to protect and maintain funding into the creative and cultural sector um, against the reality that overall um, there are cuts. And when decisions have to be made around where to put money, um, you know, culture and creativity often um, lose out. And some of that is about the narrative around what is the value. And I hope through the next couple of slides as we just flip through them, um, I'll be able to bring through a bit of a sense about what, what we're aiming to talk about and what we're trying to do in using this language of arts, culture and creativity. Um, and there are various different definitions and we'll be playing through some of these as we go through the conversation. But I think where creativity adds to the conversation is also bring in uh, the commercial creative sector, the broader concept of creativity as a trade, as a career path, which feeds out, out through our culture and art sector um, and allows us to open up more conversations around the economic value and the role that the creative sector plays in rebuilding our economy post-COVID, in cementing um, Birmingham as the centre of uh, the region and as an economic hub within uh, England, and that creative industries being a really important part of that, um, and bringing that out loud and proud in terms of the rationale and the justification for some of the funding and using the funding streams as well and part of sustainability for the sector. If we move on side to the, the next slide, please. Um, and this is just a slide, I mean, there are various different versions of this diagram, but one that I thought is useful just to kind of reflect a bit of the breadth of the creative industries. And on multiple diverse and, and vibrant parts of the creative sector. Um, all of them have value, um, all of them play different roles. Some of them overlap, some of them don't overlap. And that's a really important part of, of our approach to, to this. Just ask you to pop on to uh, menti.com. Team can pop into the chat for colleagues the Mentimeter, if you're not used to using Mentimeter, www.menti.com um, and pop that in the chat as well. Um, and when you click back, please, and the code that you need to enter is 866542. And it doesn't limit you to three. So if you've got more than three, you can put them in and keep coming back in and just adding in more. Um, and as you can see, as people add in um, their comments, those words, you'll see that starting to build the word cloud. And the reason we want to kind of kick off with this bit on the mentee is just, you know, to try and capture a bit from you about that breadth of, we all use these words of arts, culture, and creativity, but people will bring out different elements and, and value different elements differently. And, and that's gonna be part of the big conversation. It, it's not about necessarily something being better or worse, but it is that at different points for individuals in their lives, but also as individuals, different bits uh, matter differently.
So great, you can see, just give it a minute or two more. You can see that in the corner of Manuela's screen, this little uh, head, there's a little dot there with the numbers above it. And that shows how many people are taking part. Um, it's one of the things I really like about Menti is you can actually see whether people are engaging with you or they're just listening and watching other people do it. So it's a good way of um, kind of giving people an opportunity to engage. And as we can see some, the other thing that what happens is as words are mentioned more than once, you see them grow bigger in the, the word cloud as well. So there are some, there are obviously some commonalities there. There's also some, some great language around passionate, vibrant, diverse, um, different types of, of arts and culture coming through as well. So some really interesting uh, words coming through in the car, uh, oh, word cloud. Can't get my words out today. Great, so um, if we can flip back to the presentation, um, and while the word cloud will keep going, we're gonna come back to the mentee in a minute. So you'll see uh, where the world cloud is, is developing onwards. So, oh. brilliant. So if you go on to the next slide, please, uh, slide. So, brilliant, click on the next one. Lovely. So I'm just going to share a little bit some reflections that we pulled together um, before we talk a bit more about the conversation. So we are a diverse city. We're growing more diverse. I expect in a month or two's time when we get the readout from the 2021 census that we be even more diverse than we were in 2011. Um, and we have a really broad range of creative industries and creative trades. And is one of the things that I think we should be really proud of in Birmingham is that creativity, the creative arts have always been part of our heritage and that crafting and creativity is baked into Birmingham. It is something which we have incredible history um, and incredible contemporary provision of and shaping of that we want to celebrate. We need to keep enabling and keep ensuring that it is part of the future and the future ambitions of the city. If we move on to the, the next one. And it's been really interesting in the conversations I've been having over the last couple of months as I've been shaping uh, towards this and, and also getting to know the sector, I think a little bit better on things other than COVID, um, is actually how much of that history has shaped England's uh, cultural profile. There are things that Birmingham did first. There are things that Birmingham has cultivated and nurtured in a way that other cities haven't, that have really embedded uh, creativity in England in a particular way, in a particular paradigm. And we should be celebrating that, but we should also be thinking about how do we maintain that and nurture it. Our festivals are part of that. You'll find to keep clicking forward on this side. Our festivals are really important part of that. And all we know, we know, sorry, although we know some of these didn't survive through the last two years of COVID, um, you know, and festivals are really hard to keep maintained and supported, particularly when you're not allowed to meet people and come together. But we have such a rich festival picture across the city. We have a a history around poetry and writing, not just Shakespeare, but some amazing poets that, that come through and grow up and are shaped by Birmingham and are more and more being seen as part of what we do in Birmingham. I was really pleased yesterday to be at the Brig uh, event on, on racism in the city um, and seeing local poets from uh, local communities using poetry as a way of articulating their experiences of racism, but also celebrating the city and um, using creative arts to help us have conversations that are difficult, to help us see the world through different eyes, which was really, really brilliant. Um, we obviously have a history and a heritage, and I think it's really important that we're now in a much better space to acknowledge that although there are brilliant things about that heritage, they came at a cost. And they often came at a cost to particular communities. And we shouldn't shy away from having a conversation and acknowledging that the success was often built on the backs of slavery and colonialization. We need to find ways to have those conversations 
and the creative arts often allow us spaces to explore them slightly more safely perhaps than when we're having them in an open debate. We move on. As I mentioned at the start, I think one of the key things that, that we want to bring out more clearly and more loudly is the role of the creative sector in terms of the economic value to the city. Um, it's something that my reflection when I've been talking this through with Simon and colleagues is that the physical activity sector have done this really well. They've been really able to articulate the value, um, particularly of sport in the context of jobs and skills, but also to the wider economy through the flows of people. Um, what I've seen so far in the creative sector is there are bits of it, but we're not maximising out that narrative for the city, which would help us secure the investment and sustain the investment, I think, in a clear way. You know, we have the wonderful assets of the universities that are driving people through and supporting people through uh, training in creative arts, but that's not necessarily flowing into sustainable career paths and uh, large proportions of the sector work on freelance contracts and, and we saw through the pandemic the vulnerability of working in that way. So it's a really important space for us to explore through the, through the conversation. We move on to the next one. The, obviously the opportunity of the Commonwealth Games and the Birmingham Festival, which I, you know, there are lots of diverse views, but I have to say, looking at the programme from my perspective and having lived through 2012 in London, Birmingham is knocking it out of the park. The diversity of what's on offer, the range of things that are happening in little communities, uh, down in communities on streets, in parks, through to the big set pieces, the big visible spaces, um, such as the wonderful launch of Wondrous Stories in, in Centenary Square. Um, it's such a smorgasbord that we have to use that as a moment to build on and to build together on. And that's why having this conversation now is important because the conversation will form the foundation for what comes next uh, after this wonderful festival and looking to the future. So those are just some short reflections and it's time to go back to the mentee and hopefully one of the team will have clicked the button on the mentee page, which will take us to the next uh, question. So if you're on your phone, it's saying to you, the presenter has not changed the slide, um, then now it should magically go to a question. So what we want you to do, this is a free text box, so you can type, it's not an essay, it will cap you off at 250 words, uh, sorry, 250 characters. So think of it like a tweet. Um, how important is arts, culture and creativity to you and why? You, um, And just think about kind of short statements about why, why does it matter to you? Brilliant. So some people talking about how it lets you be real you. And if you um, scroll down, I think Manuela, you're controlling this, so you need to move your cursor down. Sometimes it automatically scrolls down, but it's clearly not having one of those days. There we go, it's on the scroll now. So as more people put in their responses, you'll see more of them come through. And I think some really wonderful comments there about employment, about opportunities for, this is a space where people can excel. You know, one of the challenges that, I think often we have is that as a society we value academic achievement and then we value sporting achievement and creative achievement isn't necessarily seen in the same way but actually for many people that's the space where they are really wonderful and creating amazing work and how we bring that out and we talk about that can be a really important part of of the value of the creative sector so Again, this is, these are, and what we're giving you a sense of in some of these mentee moments is, um, I'm not sure whether mentee moment is a term, but if not, I'm definitely coining it. These mentee moments gives you a sense of how, when we're doing online engagement, we're capturing from people what their feedback is. And there are different versions uh, of questions, different ways of capturing questions, but it gives you a sense about the conversation we want to have um, and I'm going to move on now to talk about why we want to have it. So 
if we can and you can still feel free to use the mentee to pop in more thoughts because there is some brilliant stuff going down there and i should say everything we talk about today is still going to be captured still part of the conversation that we're launching so if we move on to the, the next slide brilliant so let's get into the meat of it what is the big creative birmingham conversation so it's a month of conversations and engagement with citizens and communities and stakeholders about what creativity means to them as individuals, to their families, to their communities and to Birmingham as a city. Over the month, we're planning to hold a series of face to face events. We'll be doing online events. There'll be a survey and we'll talk at the end a bit about the ways you can get involved and become part of the conversation but also the ways where there are opportunities to help us. So if you've got stuff going on and you'd be able to create a space for us to come and have a bit of the conversation in your event, um, then please let us know because we really want to get out and about and, and draw in more. It's not happening in isolation. So we've been working with um, the festival. We've been working with Erica and other colleagues to draw in all the learning and insight and we'll continue to be doing that as well on work that's happened already. Um, but this is really a co focused conversation about Birmingham, um, Birmingham as a city. And it's here to, sorry, click back side before you go on. Just wanna get that final point across. The aim of the conversations are to inform the development of a new statement of intent for creativity in Birmingham. So a statement of intent sounds, sounds like a bit of a techie term, but the statement of intent, intent is about setting out the vision and ambition for the city as it starts work to create a new creativity strategy for the next decade. So it's a bit like saying, you know, what we want to do is by the end of the month of conversations, be able to shape and develop this statement of intent, which sets out our vision and the ambition, that will be launched just after the Commonwealth Games, we're hoping. And that will then kick off the programme of work to go, that's great, you've told us where you want to get to, but then how the hell do we get there? How do we develop the strategy? And we're in the process of appointing a team to work with Simon on purely developing the strategy. So there'll be three new post creative who are going to spend the next uh, six months working at PACE to co-produce the strategy with stakeholders and partners, but also then they're funded for a further year to work on the turning what's written on the page into action. So that's the, the statement intent is for the council and uh, for us to frame the strategy, but it is very much to be the starting point of which then the strategy uh, moves forward. So if we move forward into the, the next slide. Um, so just, me, yeah. So the aim is that the strategy is around uh, the statement of intent for the vision for arts, culture and creativity in the city for the next decade. Um, and that is the ambition through the conversations is to involve the sector uh, in terms of the creative sector, but also to involve citizens and communities. You know, we're very conscious that depending who you talk to you get different answers so by having a broad conversation we can be as broad as we can in shaping a shared vision the strategy that then is developed off the back of that builds out what's the role of the council what's the role of partners like culture central the role of the cultural compact and others and the role of the combined authority for example in taking this forward um, they feed out of the the conversations that have been had with the uh, Commonwealth Games are feeding into this, but it's important to recognise this is focusing on Birmingham, where the Commonwealth Games conversation has been broader to the whole region. Uh, this is very much focusing on Birmingham as the city and what we as a city are aiming to shape for the future. Um, so sorry, before you go off that page, this one on the side, I'll tell you when to go forward because I want to make sure that we are uh, covering things off and making sure we're, we're getting the detail out for people. Um, 
So the aim is that alongside what we're doing with the uh, citizens, we're working with the sector and we've been talking through with Erica around some of the work that's already been commissioned. So we can piggyback and build on that rather than replicate uh, and duplicate, but we can also learn from that. And as we go through the journey, we're also learning from the research and insight from the Commonwealth Games Festival as well to help shape this. But the aim is that we move towards uh, a vision statement that resonates with citizens, that resonates with stakeholders, and allows us to say, this is where we want to be over the next decade. That will then give us something to aim for in developing the detail of the strategy for the next stages. If you move on side to the next one. So this pretty just reiterates it, so we won't dwell on it, but it is about setting the tone and direction. It's not getting into the weeds of the detail. The detail of the how we get to delivering that vision is what will be done through the development of the strategy. And one of the reasons we're taking this approach, because there was quite a strong um, political push to develop a strategy tomorrow. Get, let's get a strategy that we can launch after the Commonwealth Games. And I've pushed back quite strongly saying, actually, the strategy needs to be something we take time on, not forever, but we take a decent kind of six months working with partners to co-produce in the way we have done on the food strategy, which is just out for consultation at the moment. Um, but we can, over the period of time that we have, get to position of a, a sense of that statement of intent, giving us the tone and direction. So that's why it's being done in this way, rather than us going, well, let's start work on the strategy and kind of have no landmarks and it, it potentially gets caught in uh, other bits. So that's the kind of framing of where the statement of intent sits. It's about setting the tone and direction of travel for the strategy then to get deep into the detail. So if we move on to the, the next slide. So how will the conversations happen? Well, we'll have online events. There's an online survey, which we'll be soft launching with you today. The big launch will happen next week, but we thought it was sensible to give you guys the link so you can get on feed in thoughts. Um, but also if you identify any bloops, uh, bloopers that we need to correct, please let us know, because it's a good time to, to do it before we go out with the, the big media launch on it. We'll be holding five locality events across the city. These will be world cafe type events um, to engage citizens. We'll be doing what's called a pre-mortem event um, with stakeholders. That's a specific type of event where you go, we had this great ambition, it failed. Why did it fail? And you kind of go work then backwards through to what are the things that we need to do differently to make sure that it doesn't fail. It's a technique we used in the co-creation of the health and wellbeing board strategy. Um, and it really helped people think in a different way. So we'll be, that's an example of one of the approaches we'll be using with stakeholders. And we're also about to go to market to commission specific focus groups with communities of identity and experience to make sure that their voices are heard uh, in terms of the conversation. So moving on to the, the next slide. So we thought we'd just try this one out uh, for you. and. Uh, it should already, the team have got really on top of this. So we're already into the, on your Mentimeter, we'll be asking you the next question. So give us a sense of what your vision is uh, for the creative future of Birmingham. Great. So people are getting some words in, some phrases, things like long-term investment, sustainable and diverse and co-owned, youth-led input. Brilliant. These are the kind of things that we want you to be feeding in, not just now, but we want to see through the conversation because we need to have conversations around whether some of these we're achievable. What, what is achievable in the context of um, public sector funding? What is it that the public sector should fund, either council versus what should be funded by other sources, um, some comments around diversity celebration, socioeconomic welfare. It's a really important part of um, one of the conversations that we want to have, and it ties into both the economic value 
of the sector, but also the sector is an employment sector. And you know, we know that the evidence base around good work and the difference between good work and not good work, because when you go bad work, people immediately go to a kind of sweatshop mentality. But there are lots of spaces where actually having insecure employment, not having access to occupational health, not having good line management mean that employees' well-being is poor. And you thinking about that as part of the conversation for what we want to see in the in the sector. Some strong words around strategy as well, raising the profile, recognizing it, its role there. Um, learning from other European cities, I think brilliant comment. One of the pieces of work we've been doing in the background around this is looking at the culture and arts and creativity strategies from other global cities around the world. Um, it's been really interesting, some, some insight in kind of uh, the balance between great words and how much is actual action, particularly in terms of investment, but also how they're measuring impact, which is something that we want to uh, bring out, because again, that helps discuss how we create long term investment, how we create a sustainable sector. So some brilliant, brilliant stuff in there, which really uh, is really reassuring for me because it really resonates with some of the conversations I've been having uh, on a more one to one and bilateral basis through this. So do keep popping those thoughts in. Uh, if we come back to the, the slides, please side. So, great. And if we go on to the next one, this is where I, so just before we go on to Simon's bit, um, are we able to show Councillor Francis video? Because I think that'd be quite useful as a bit of a break for me, give Simon a chance to catch his breath before we go into his bit. So are we able to go back to Councillor Francis video and, and show that? Still no sound, Said. Oh, there we go. Great. There was sound there. Let's try again. No, still no sound. If not, let's go back to, to Simon's bit and I'll hand over to Simon and we'll keep working on trying to get the video up and running for people because- One more attempt. No, it's fine. Well, let's, if we go back to the slide set and um, Simon, if I hand over to you for your piece while we try and get the, the video sound working. You would have thought after two years of COVID, we would have, would have worked this out, but Zoom, Zoom is not the normal platform we use uh, in public health, hence I think it's causing some challenges. But Simon, over to you for the next bit. Thanks, Justin. I uh, hope you can all hear me. Um, my name is Simon Easton, Head of Cultural Development and Tourism at the City Council, if you, uh, if you don't know me, and uh, thanks, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, next slide, please, Said. So uh, first slide I'm going to talk about is the Council's overarching strategic role in culture. I've got three slides and they're very sort of much surface level, I'm not trying to give you too much detail, but a flavour of how the Council uh, uh, deals with its strategic approach and an investment approach to culture. Um, so the first thing you can see on the list there is developing and facilitating cultural strategies, for example, the next cultural strategy, helping, uh, helping with this uh, development with our stakeholders and our communities. Uh, we also have a, a heritage strategy. I was at the heritage strategy group just earlier this morning, uh, and we're, we're more than halfway through the new heritage strategy. And we have an existing public art strategy, um, but the leader wants that to be refreshed. So we'll be looking to commission the new public art strategy uh, this year as well. Um, our role is to facilitate cultural partnerships. There's been various iterations of cultural partnerships over the years. Uh, some of you uh, been here a long time might remember the Partnership for Culture. Uh, and we've got a new initiative, which is called Cultural Compact. Very similar concept, really, of engaging our key stakeholders across the city. So that's the City Council, Culture Central, the universities, 
business organizations, developers, the health sector particularly, to all come together and share in the ownership of culture in its widest sense in the city. So that's a mechanism for you know, making sure that we have that round table um, gathering or, or, or collective approach to, as I say, share the ownership of culture in the city, that it's not just led by the city council. However, we are you know, an agent to help facilitate these, these, uh, these models of collaboration. Um, investing in our cultural organisations, my next slide talks about that in more detail, as does investing in cultural initiatives and cultural projects. So that's the financial investment that the City Council has. Uh, go back a slide, Saeed, sorry. Thank you. Um, supporting commissioning of cultural projects. Uh, cultural interventions and projects. So besides um, commissioning arts projects across the city, uh, we have a number of um, uh, cultural projects that happen through the, through the year, uh, Birmingham Heritage Week, uh, Black History Month off the top of my uh, head, and also uh, some of you may remember Amal, the in migrant refugee puppet tour that came to Erdington uh, uh, earlier last year. So um, yeah, a, a whole range of different projects and in the past, we've had a year of South Asian arts, year of young people, and those sorts of things, which we've also commissioned. Uh, facilitating events right across the city. So uh, although we have a separate events team head by Gary, Gary Peel, uh, we're also quite closely involved in uh, events across the city, the International Dance Festival, for example, and others that, um, that take place. Uh, public art, I've mentioned, we oversee the public art collection for the city. Uh, and um, it, it's our role to, to make sure that that's maintained and, uh, uh, and new public art is uh, agreed through our public art group, for example. Uh, cultural infrastructure planning, a bit of a long-winded term that, but what it means is that with any of the new developments that take place, particularly the major developments in the city, um, we like to have a seat at the table. Some of you may be familiar with our, our future city plan, which is very much the current document uh, development plan for the city. Uh, and if I may give you one example, Smithfield, uh, which is currently um, vacant where the old markets, wholesale markets were, um, and will become a, a major development over the next 10 years. But there are a number of cultural organizations or cultural buildings, uh, what shall I say, cultural um, institutions that will be developed as part of that. And we are working with the developers as part of the city council to determine exactly what that is going to be, but also the new festival square that's planned for the center of Smithfield. Um, talking with Gary and the events team about what sort of events can take place in that square, what infrastructure is needed. So that gives you an idea uh, as to the sort of infrastructure planning work. And last but not least, I mean, providing advice and guidance to our cultural sector organisations. Um, when we commission projects, for example, we like to help organisations become, if you like, commission ready. So that's providing advice about uh, policies, uh, be it health and safety policy or in insurance or indeed um, um, uh, 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 equalities and guidance and, and all sorts of different ideas, so, in different things like that, that, that a, a constituted organisation needs to be able to be more commission ready. Next slide, Saeed, please. So just a little bit more detail about our cultural investment. Um, Birmingham Museums, which used to be part of the City Council, was spun out in 2012 to a trust, an independent trust. Uh, we still own the museum buildings as the council and we own the collections, but the museum service contract is, um, is managing those buildings and managing those collections for us. And we're into a, a new era with the museums, with, uh, with Zach and Sarah Wajid as the co-directors. Uh, and if any of you went to the opening uh, last Thursday, you'll have seen uh, some of the grand developments that are taking place uh, with the museums, uh, uh, particularly at BMAG. But there are nine sites in total dotted across the city, uh, also including the Museums Collection Centre. And we manage the contract and we fund that contract for Birmingham Museums Trust. Uh, we have funding support for large scale lyric arts organisations, such as the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra. It's not that well known that actually the City Council initiated the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra some now, I think 102 years ago, I think it was 100 years uh, anniversary just the year before last. Um, B Music, which is the organization that runs Town Hall Symphony Hall, Birmingham Rep, 
Birmingham Royal Ballet, etc. So these are the large sort of large scale lyric organizations that, that Birmingham has as a council traditionally supported, matching, I should say, uh, the funding that is coming in from the Arts Council for those uh, organizations. Um, commissioning, and, and this is where perhaps uh, more relevant to some of you from the smaller independent organizations, uh, every year we commission projects across four themes. Uh, and these four themes were established from the council plan some years ago, but they are still uh, very relevant today. So the first one, culture on your doorstep, is mainly targeted. This is arts funding, by the way. This is funding for arts organisations uh, delivering work in the communities across Birmingham. Culture on our doorstep is very much about supporting adults in neighbourhoods, particularly adults that are perhaps hard to reach and don't have engagement opportunities for culture. So there's one strand there. The next strand is called Next Generation, which as you can see is for young people. So that's specifically targeting arts activities and projects for young people across the city. Uh, cultural diversity, again, this is looking at a range of um, projects for different cultural organizations and ethnicity, ethnicity can't, can't say the word, groups across the city. So, um, uh, you know, obviously trying to make sure we have a breadth of, of range of program for as many communities as possible. And this year, last but not least, the Commonwealth Games. We've been funding projects now for the last two years for Commonwealth Games uh, project delivery in, uh, in, in communities. We originally funded 20 projects, feasibility projects with arts organizations. Some of those went forward. I think about 15 went forward as uh, live projects that are still running now. Um, next one is commissioning local arts forum. Uh, we started the local arts forum network in around 2014 from memory, partly in response to the fact that our team was being reduced. Uh, we've been quite reduced significantly over the years because of the austerity government cutbacks. I don't want to be political, but that's the reality. And in order for us to have a better reach across the city, uh, in what was then the 10 districts constituencies, we established a local arts forum, or a local arts forum. Uh, of, as I say, there are still 10 today. And um, that gives us a sort of um, a much more ground-based, local, locally-based intelligence working with those organisations who are acting as our network for the cultural discussions with communities and arts organisations in, in, uh, in that district. Uh, and, and that's been running successfully ever since. Again, funding has had to be reduced, but, uh, but it's still going, and it's a very important part of our network of, of cultural organisations across the city. Uh, as I mentioned just earlier, we commission annual cultural events, the Heritage Week, the History Month, International Dance Festival, uh, as, uh, as three main examples um, of large-scale cultural events. And um, some of you may not know, but we run the Film Birmingham office as well, which is the is the, is the city, but also acting as a sort of regional film office for filming inquiries. Uh, and just last year, you may know, we had Tom Cruise in town filming Mission Impossible 7. Uh, Steven Spielberg was here a few years ago with Ready Player One. And um, as, as Justin was saying, as saying earlier, the importance of the film and production sector ecology, to our creative ecology is, is becoming increasingly important, particularly as uh, we may be developing towards the, the new film production studios led by Stephen Knight. So uh, an exciting time, but an area for growth. And Saeed, last but uh, least slide, please. So just some examples of our cultural stakeholders or partners that we work with. Culture Central has been mentioned. And for those of you that don't know, Culture Central is the, well, was Birmingham's membership arts organization. And now since COVID has expanded its remit to the whole West Midlands, so uh, I, I deal with Erica and Anthony, who are the co-directors at Culture Central on a regular basis, as our team does. And we're working with them, as Justin's mentioned, quite closely on this cultural legacy, cultural program legacy work that's going on with uh, uh, organisations and arts groups across the city. Create Central, a relatively new body, is the film and production TV, TV, TV film and production digital media uh, organization that was created again fairly recently in, in the last few years uh, and is um, run under the aegis of the combined authority or certainly the combined authority secured funding for it um, but that's been a really important body in terms of the growth of the film and tv and production sector for the west midlands uh, but also obviously focusing on birmingham and helping the helping get the idea of the film studios off the ground 
Birmingham Heritage Strategy Group, as I mentioned earlier, we just had the meeting, uh, quarterly meeting this morning, uh, chaired by our own councillor Phil Davis, who's heritage champion. Um, that's that's a very large group of heritage sector organisations across the city, uh, but also national and regional organisations. So the National Trust, National Water Heritage Fund, uh, um, and um, and other regional organisations turn up to that meeting. So that helps look at the. Uh, development of the heritage strategy which I was talking about but also live issues that are happening around heritage in the city. Number 11 Arts, this is the uh, umbrella organisation looking after the local arts fora. They're a representative group of uh, medium, small, mid-scale uh, arts producing uh, individuals and organisations across the city. Uh, one of our previous colleagues, Gaminda, is very involved in the Number 11 Arts uh, agenda. Civic Society, Birmingham Civic Society, uh, again, a very important body and a long-standing organisation uh, looking after lots of things in the city as far as a civic element is concerned. But our interest is particularly around the public realm and public art uh, element of the civic society's work. Uh, they were instrumental in, in, for example, developing the um, Big Art Project, which is the uh, which is the installation that will go into the concourse of the new uh, HS2 when it comes. Um, faith groups and organisations, um, not so much direct involvement with faith groups, but re really through the events side. So such as Big John's Mela and um, other sort of uh, religious faith events that, are, that also involve a cultural element as well. Um, that, that can also mean, you know, dealing with the, the, the Irish community for St. Patrick's Day Parade, the Chinese Festival Committee for the Chinese celebrations, but, but also the faith groups around Eid, uh, Vaisaki, Diwali, those sorts of faith festivals too have a cultural element uh, involved. Business improvement districts and high streets or bids as they're known. Um, we have a new bids manager in our team, Chris, and uh, obviously the bids are very important, particularly city centre as, as to helping uh, encourage the cultural activity that takes place in and around the streets uh, of, of the city and indeed high streets around uh, the city as well. The universities, and especially I mentioned University of Birmingham and Birmingham City University, who have very strong uh, creative and cultural um, uh, agendas. Uh, there is a, a, you know, a Faculty of Culture and Law, for example, at UOB, and they're dealing with their, their own initiative called Culture Forward at the moment. So, uh, and Dr. Ewan, Professor Ewan Fernie is, is, for example, from UOB, dealing with the everybody's um, Everything to Everybody project, uh, which is the Shakespeare project that's, that's launching next month. Um, and last but not least, the West Midlands uh, Culture Officer Group. Um, that's that's, a, that's a, a, a regional group of culture officers such as myself, working with the combined authority to um, look at the cultural agenda around the city. And um, the West Midlands Growth Company as well. Uh, we work with Ben and my team looking at tourism. We're just about to produce the Birmingham Visitor Destination Plan, which is very focused around the cultural offer uh, and the tourist offer for the city. So um, it gives you a sort of, a, as I say, a surface view really of the, uh, of the way we approach culture, how we fund culture and some of the partners uh, that we work with. Um, Justin, I'm going to stop there because that's the last of my slides. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Simon. I think that's a, a really helpful, um, really helpful overview of it. And, and I think, Side, if you go back, because I think there is one more mentee to go. So please, on your mentee, on your phone or on your laptop, please go through and ask the question. What is it? What is what well, should be? What is it? Sorry, our English clearly wasn't there. So what do you think we should? think the council can do to improve creativity, arts and culture sector in Birmingham. And I think one of the things I do want to be really upfront of about this, and it, we will bring it through, uh, I think, in the further in the conversations, is, you know, the reality of cash, because most people will go, we want more investment. Well, every single sector wants more investment. And the reality is that council has a finite plot of money. That plot of money has been declining. Um, but also the cost of some of the things we buy have got more expensive. So, uh, and you know, I think it's really important to acknowledge the hard work that Simon and his team have put in within the council, protecting what little they've been able to protect because often when there are budget cuts, um, you know, the, choice, the hard choice the council has to make is 
and this puts it really in, in bluntly is do we put money into a cultural and creative intervention or do we fund a day centre for adults with learning difficulties? Because it's neither or. It is not, um, you know, it's not an and in the reality of that. So we've got to think about investment in different ways. And I think that is one of the opportunities of the strategy to think about. And I'll share with colleagues, I don't know if, if anyone's from the ballet is on, on the call today, but I was at the ballet, uh, uh, shortly last week, I think it was, uh, the Birmingham Ballet, and we were talking about career paths for dancers. And one of the things we were able to do then is connect the ballet into the opportunity to draw on the apprenticeship levy from larger organisations which can't use it, and it goes into a pot that smaller organisations can pull on. Now, that won't fund dance courses, but it will fund, for example, project management training. So it's a really good opportunity to kind of think about different ways of supporting the sector by opening up opportunities into different funding streams. Um, and I think it's really good to see some of the comments uh, that people are, are commenting around, around thinking about how we prioritise, um, how we value, and I saw in the chat as well, some comments around how we really frame this in the language around the diversity of the city and that culture uh, and creativity builds bridges between communities, builds understanding, and that's really important. Um, but I would also say the flip side of that is the relatively limited cash in the uh, community cohesion pot. It's one of the big challenges. It's not something that's necessarily funded. Um, but as someone said in the, in the chat, I think it's Tim, he's, he's commenting in there. Yeah, actually, if we get the balance right between what we invest and actually what it leverages in, that's the sweet spot. That's the bit that I'm certainly hopeful that over the, the period after the vision statement, after that statement of intent, we get into really thinking about how do we get to that sweet spot where the, every pound that's put in from the council generates five pounds from other investment or from visitor income or visitor spend. You, how do we really articulate that? Because then it makes it much easier to help Simon defend the budget. Um, because I think that has been a real challenge, not just for Simon, but for his counterparts across the country, is that the, the statutory must-dos of social care, of child protection, um, have won out. And what's quite interesting, you know, I came to the council having worked in national government and previously that in the NHS, is in within the council, some of the things where we spend quite a lot of the budget are ring fence, like public health or like the, the money we spend on schools which is a really big chunk of the council's budget is ring fenced. It can only be spent in certain ways. So it's important we, we bring these conversations out. And, and I think some of the comments are, are really good in feeding them back. If we go back across to the, the slide set. And the other joy I should say about Mentee is everything you've put in gets saved. So we keep that and we build this log, which is really important. So moving on to the next slide side, which is the, the big one. How can you get involved? How can you help us take part in this? So first of all is to say the tender is, I think, either live today or will be by the end of this week or the beginning of next week, which is on the finditinbirmingham.com tender portal. Um, and if you put in seldom heard voices, um, that's probably the easiest way to find it. I know that the, the portal is not the most intuitive for providers, um, but if you are an organisation that enjoys, is good at running focus groups, um, bringing people together and you want to take part in that, there are a series of lots, so you don't have to do everything. Um, but it, it's a great opportunity to help us support the conversation. There's a Be Her digital survey, and I think uh, in a later slide, we're going to have the link from that. Um, we've got a programme of engagement events and workshops, but the big ask for everyone joining today is um, if you have an event, a workshop, you're running a festival over June, and you can find space for us, whether it's a room, a bit of the programme, whatever it is, let us know. So we've got a central email now, Big Creative Birmingham at birmingham.gov.uk. Let us know and we'll do our best to field someone 
a member of the team to come in and take part in that event um, because we really want to maximize the opportunity that we have as a city to get in there. Um, the, uh, I know Claire's asked in the chat about the tender. The tender is uh, framed in the way we commission our focus groups in general. So it's not specific to the cultural sector. You don't have to be a cultural organization to bid for it um, because the, um, the tender is for the focus groups rather than to focus groups have the conversation about creativity um, but I think and certainly we have had creative organizations I will probably get their name wrong but I want to say women in theatre um, have been one of the providers who've done this who've bid for tenders like this before and produced really really good work um, and that's been around running focus groups with women who they are very well experienced at working with so um, it's a range of uh, tenders and lots there so it's worth having a look at and it's something that in public health we tender quite regularly these focus groups so I think you know, it's not a huge amount of money um, but it's definitely something that's worth looking at um, if that's something that's in your wheelhouse uh, as something you get involved in so if we move on I think Manuela you're controlling slides on to the next one So we'll skip the short break because I think we're doing quite well on time. So let's keep going. So this gives you a bit of an outline of where we're up to in the programming. Um, it's worth sharing, you know, I got asked to do this. I think Simon, it was three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago. Um, wasn't that long ago, uh, this, this landed in my lap uh, and therefore in Simon's lap. <laughs> and, um, and I think, uh, you know, Simon's been experiencing uh, some of my whirlwind speed uh, and doing a great job trying to adapt to it. Because it's, you know, one of the reasons I've been asked to, to help and, and lead on this director is um, many of you will know me through COVID. You will have worked with me through the COVID response. Um, I do have a style that's a bit like Marmite. I know that and I work at a pace which is, is can be feel a bit like being on the end of a force of nature. Um, but it's a, for me, this is such an exciting opportunity, particularly in the context of the festival, all the energy we have about creativity at the moment. And what I'm really passionate about is making sure we use that, we energise that to not end up with a oh, slump uh, at the end of the festival in September. By the time we get to the end of the cultural festival in September, I really want to have that statement of intent out, the strategy work well underway so that people can really see how the jigsaw of the legacy of the Commonwealth Games for cult the culture sector across the West Midlands region is intersecting with our creativity vision for Birmingham for the next decade and how that creative vision creates an umbrella under which things like the public arts strategy and the heritage strategy connect so that people are really starting to feel that as a city, we have a clear sense of direction and that that connects clearly and coherently with the regional perspective and a regional vision of where things are going. So that's why we're on this kind of sprint. That's why there's some of the, the opportunity uh, and energy there. And as you can see, there's plenty of space in the calendar. Um, what we haven't yet built in and started to program in is some of the, the targeted online workshops we want to do with particular communities of identity and experience. And we'll be building this up over the next two weeks. Manuela, who's really held the ring on this beautifully for me as one of our graduate interns, she'll be handing the reins over to a guy called Edward, who'll be starting with me on the 6th because Manuela's going on to a, a permanent job in public health, which is great for her. Um, great for me because it's still within public health in Birmingham, but does mean you'll see some slightly different names coming through, which is why we've got that general email for everyone. We move on to the um, Next uh, slide. So this is the link and uh, side. Can you pop it in the chat for everyone as well? Um, this is the link to the Be Heard survey. As I say, we're, we're launching as a soft launch to everyone today. Um, we're going to do the kind of comms big bit on the 1st of June to really launch the, the month of conversation. But I wanted to get it out to you and, I, and great thanks to the team today who worked really hard this morning to just get it over the line because they were they were on the first of june and i was like really like it out for the group today so you guys can get first dibs at having a go 
Um, and if you do find anything that you feel mm, we've not worded it right or you find a typo or something doesn't work for you, please let us know. You're kind of pilot group of people to, to get your feedback. Um, so if you have a go at it, please. And if you do find things, send through to that email, uh, the big creative Birmingham at birmingham.gov.uk. I think that would be brilliant. So Manuela, have we managed to get the video working or is it still, are we still uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and do it now. I think I've figured out how to do that. Brilliant, because I think that's the last of the slides, isn't it? So we can, there we go. Let's see how we go. I'm Councillor Jane Francis, Cabinet Member for Digital, Culture, Heritage and Tourism. I was delighted to be invited to speak to you today as part of this very important event and I'm really, really sorry that I'm unable to take part in person. Anybody who knows me knows I'm passionate about Birmingham and its rich and diverse arts and cultural community and I cannot highlight enough how important it is in bringing the many, many benefits both now and in the future. And I'd include in this supporting community cohesion, encouraging arts and health, attracting inward investment and tourism, developing skills, promoting Birmingham's profile and our international identity, and supporting education and outreach for young people across communities. Finally, and providing opportunities for cultural engagement and entertainment for all our residents and citizens. So why, what do you want to see in the future of Birmingham as a creative city? Becoming a leader in cultural democracy where people come together to co-create, commission, lead and participate in a wide range of locally relevant, pluralistic and community driven culture ventures. Cementing Birmingham's role and reputation as a centre of creativity, innovation and enterprise with local roots and international reach. And in ensuring that all our children and young people have opportunities to engage with a diverse range of high quality arts and cultural experiences at every stage in their development and which they value as, as worth it. Birmingham's accessibility as a destination and the attractiveness and depth of our cultural offer drives more overnight stays from visitors, growing the visitor economy and providing more and better opportunities in direct and indirect jobs for local people. So what do we need to do to shape the future for Birmingham as a creative city? We need to adapt our business models to ensure that they're capable of sustaining and growing the sector into the future. We need to ensure a contribution from a wider range of partners to resourcing culture in the city, drawing on those who benefit directly or indirectly from Birmingham's cultural capital to meet and where possible exceed the gap, gap resulting from the decline in public funding. We need to secure an increased and fairer share of national resources required to help deliver the cultural strategy and to enable greater impact. We need to plan and deliver the city's key agendas of skills and employment, health and well-being, and the cultural creativity and visitor economy to ensure that they're better integrated and leading to improved health, skills and social cohesion, thus enabling greater impact. And finally, we need to be able to support and enable the growth of creative and cultural SMEs, micro businesses, and individuals through business support, skills, and talent development, and access to finance. So, what does this creative city and culture look like, and how can we shape it? The cultural voice of local residents is valued, so we want to enable, develop, and share it. We want to see more people involved in cultural activities in the city to give them a better sense of place, local identity, better quality of life, improved health and well-being and social cohesion. We want to ensure that the profile of artists, audiences, participants and cultural leaders in this city better reflects our population. We want to make sure that the city's young and diverse population develops the skills necessary to enable creative and cultural businesses to grow. Residents have more and better opportunities in direct and indirect creative and cultural sector jobs. So we want to listen to your ideas and suggestions through having these creative conversations and establish what creativity means to communities in the city in order to shape a strategy accordingly. The first stage of this will be to create a statement of intent, setting out the vision for arts and culture in the city as shaped by you. It will be a 10 year strategy and we're hoping to launch in August this year. 
So I'm really looking forward to seeing, hearing all these suggestions and ideas. And thank you so much for all your support. We cannot do this without you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Manuela, for um, getting that out in a way we could hear it. I know it's, there's lots of work being going on in the background uh, for this. So I think well, that's the last slide, isn't it? Yeah. So um, if you now go on to the mentee, we thought this might be the easier way to, um, to ask any questions. Um, but I think also you can put up your hand if you want to as well. But um, one of the reasons for doing it this way is it helps us uh, get them through. So, um, so it's a really interesting question there about how we'll be able to ensure that keep public art the heart of this infesting things that do not affect culture and arts profile of the city. Well, that's going to be one of the things that people need to highlight through the conversation. Um, uh, sorry, keep the public rather than public art. Um, that's going to be one of the reasons we're structuring the conversation in the way we are in terms of having things like um, targeted engagement with particular communities, but also doing the in-person stuff in place and doing it in the five localities of the city. You know, if we just do it in the city centre, that's not going to work. We need to talk about what does it feel like in terms of creative city in Longbridge as much as we do uh, in the context of um, Sutton Coalfield in the context of the city centre. You know, we need to have a city where culture and creativity is across the entire 69 wards. Um, but there are also realities about balancing that with creating tourist hubs that drive income and investment uh, as well. So it is, you know, that's going to be some of the stuff around making sure that we do get citizen voice, but we also get a really good cross section of citizen voice. And again, that's why the, the focus groups are quite important. Just pause to see if any other. Um, I think we have some questions in um, the chat. One question by, ooh, I've, missed, I've lost it. Question. I think there was a question from Arjit about um, the tender. So I was saying, if you go on to find it in Birmingham, first, the thing to do over the next 48 hours is register on find it in Birmingham because you just need to do that headache first to get onto it. And the second is then put into the search engine on Find It in Birmingham. Seldom heard voices is usually the easiest way to find these tenders. You can just look at when they're posted. Now I expect it's gonna go up, Manuel can, Manuela can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's probably gonna go up beginning of next week rather than this week. There are bits we've got to do in the council um, to make sure everything's signed up, but I'm not sure it's live yet, is it Manuela? Um, not live yet, but should be really soon. So what I would say is get yourself registered on Find It in Birmingham if you're not already there. And then probably Monday, Tuesday next week, have a look. Um, we will be keeping the tender window open for at least two to three weeks to give people a chance to, to get submissions in. Um, but the first bit is, as I say, get your registration on. So we've got a question, another question um, about the statement of intent. Um, question by Claire. Uh, the statement of intent is for B BCC's position around supporting the sector or a statement of intent facilitated by BCC, which includes the sector? So it is very much around including the sector and that's why we're doing the engagement, working with Culture Central and other partners around what does the sector think, but alongside what do citizens think? And it's important we have those voices. Um, one of the things I'm quite keen to try and do during the month is also uh, talk to the academic sector about what do they think from their perspective of their courses and their students. We have some real gems when it comes to career training in, in the creative sector, um, not least Birmingham College, um, who you know, are a huge trainer of uh, people who are going to have careers in creative arts, um, ranging from fine arts through to uh, technical skills. I think one of the other exciting bits, and I know someone put that in, I think somewhere I saw in the chat, something around thinking about um, new forms of art. Um, and really, you, when you look at some of the creativity sector in Digba, particularly the emergence of people who are creative in 
virtual media spaces in 4D, pro, 3D, 4D experiences, you whole new worlds of creative endeavor that didn't exist, really didn't exist a kind of decade ago or really in their infancy, are now becoming completely new forms of cultural and creative expression. So that's all some of the, the kind of diversity we want to try and pull out. Um, but the statement of intent is, as I said, it's trying to put that clear shared vision of what is the ambition for where we want to get to over the next 10 years. And that then allows us to build a strategy around that vision uh, in co-production. And I think I've covered off, Claire also put in the chat, I talked about at the time about how does this link with the cultural program. Um, and as I said, uh, just after Simon was talking, it's the idea of these becoming interconnected, but being very clear, this is about Birmingham. Um, the legacy for the games is broader than Birmingham. It's a regional legacy, so they will interconnect, but this is very specifically about Birmingham. Much as we love Coventry and Solihull and our neighbours, um, my focus in this work is, is doing what is the best interest of Birmingham uh, and building a better creative future for our city. So if you can flip down, yeah, how will we keep the buzz after games? So really good question about how do we keep the buzz after the games? Um, that I think is one of the reasons of doing it in this way. So we end up with a statement of intent. We're aiming to come out with it around August time, if all goes to plan, uh, to then launch the development of the strategy, which means then with the festival finishing I think it's the end of September. That's another drumbeat with the name that the strategy will go into public consultation in the spring of 2023. So what you start to see is a kind of uh, sense of drumbeats that keep the engagement, the energy, keep the passion for a creative Birmingham moving forward, uh, which I think is, is really important. And just picking up Claire's question, asked question in the chat about you, we think about what's the council's role in this and, and you, we're just one partner, but we are a very important partner in the sector. And, and that's what I've tried to articulate through what we talked about today is that um, the council's role in this as the kind of nexus of the, the city partnership is primarily around convening and enabling and helping to set a shared vision and a shared approach. Um, it cannot be about funding everything. It cannot be about doing everything. It shouldn't be. Um, and this is very much, some of you will be aware of the food strategy. So what I would say is kind of, if you're trying to understand the approach and, and the way we're doing this, do you have a look at what we're doing in the food strategy, which is currently out for public consultation? Um, because it's a very, very different strategy from the council. Um, and that's what I want to do with this approach is really in it say, you know, uh, the council can convene, it can bring people together, it can energize, it can enable a conversation. And part of that conversation has to be in the longer term strategy in those 10 years. What is it that the council uh, needs to do? What is it, its role? What is its contribution? But not just the council, what is it the police is doing? What's the where the police and crime commissioner is funding creative interventions. How are we making sure we're connecting with each other so we're making the best use of the money that we have? How are we working with our academic partners around the career paths? How are we influencing the LEPs, the local enterprise partnerships, so that their money um, flows through to creating the energy around creativity that there is around science, technology and maths? Um, so those are the kind of things that I, I, from my perspective, and I know the conversations I have with Simon, it's a, it's a shared kind of sense of, we have a moment in time to, I think, use the energy of the Commonwealth Games to reposition creativity in the city, to build an approach which weaves creativity into the fundamental response to the societal challenges that the partnership of the city is facing. So that creativity is no longer seen as a nice to do, 
and something that can be cut and sacrificed, but is actually fundamental to how are we responding to the challenges of poverty? How are we responding to unemployment challenges for young people? How are we responding to community tensions and crime and violence? And it is seen as a valid and valued part of the response. Um, and that's part of what we hope to be able to, to move that forward. And the, the technicalities, and Claire, I know you're part of Simon's team, so you'll be able to have these conversations directly with Simon um, around the cultural compact and their role um, and the role of other partners in the development of the strategy. That comes in the bit that's after the statement of intent. So the focus at the moment is get to the, the statement of intent through the conversation over the, the next month. And then we will move into the um, the strategy uh, development of the strategy, which I we will by that time have a dedicated team in place to be working on this full time. Um, and that's a really good question in the Q and A about how can we ensure that outcomes and impact of the strategy lead to greater cohesion, inclusion, and peace. I think one of the things that I would say in response to this is. One, really important to feed that into the conversation. Is that an outcome that we want to see? That, that you know, we want to see much clearer connections being made. Um, inclusion and cohesion are, is one of the challenges I think the council's faced over its communication strategy. Very good document in a sense but didn't necessarily get clear enough indicators of success. You know, what would good look like? How would we measure good in that sense? And I think um, you, that will be a really important part of the strategy development because in the time that I've been with the council, um, my experience has been that unless you write into a strategy really clear, both logic connections between why you're doing things and what you expect the outcome to be but then also how do you measure that outcome it doesn't really make a difference and that absolutely speaks to the point Ajit just put in the chat which is we need to design success criteria as part of the strategy absolutely and that's a really important part of what will start to scratch the surface of in the conversation but it's important to say that the conversation over June is not the totality of the conversation it's the conversation which will get us to a statement of intent, but it will then continue into a conversation which is taken forward through the strategy team in developing the strategy. And I would expect us to see over September, October, November and December, a lot more of conversations happening and this being an ongoing um, conversation in the way, as I said, we've done with food, where we're continually going backwards and forwards going, if we want to do this, how do we measure it? Can we measure it? Is there a measure? What would it mean to get there? You know, if we say this is the ambition, is it realistic? And in order to get there over 10 years, what are the kind of steps that we would need to make? And I think all of that's the kind of, the really chewy bit that we get into um, once we have a sense of where we want to get to. And that, that for me is what the statement of intent is about. It's about creating that sense of where do we want to get to for creativity in the city over the next decade? And then the strategy is, okay, if that's where we're swimming towards, what are the bits that we need to do on the way to get there? So I think we're almost at time now. So some great, thank you everyone who's joined us. Simon, I just want to check, is there anything that, I've missed or you feel that we need to add in? No, just to reiterate the work that Culture Central are doing uh, around, it's, it's primarily to say around the legacy, the cultural programme legacy of the Commonwealth Games. But there was a session at the MAC on uh, Tuesday this week, for example, where cultural organisations were invited to. Again, that's an ongoing dialogue over the next month or two. Um, that will produce um, uh, and help inform the work that's going on here. So that, as you said, Justin Ford, very much a crossover between this local consolation, consolation, consultation that we're doing and the work of the, of the regional cultural programme. So um, if you don't know Culture Central, do by all means log on to their website, uh, culturecentral.co.uk and uh, get the information there about the creative consultation as well that's going on there. 
Great. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, the reality is that we are, as always, navigating lots of changing bits of the system and, and um, working through this. And some of this, I think, would have been great. Uh, we would have been great to get started a bit earlier on, but we did have that little thing called an election that got in the way and slowed us down. So um, we've been on kind of, we started and stopped and started and stopped a bit while we've been thinking through and waiting for the new cabinet to uh, to take uh, shape and, and provide the support and leadership to move this forward. And as you saw in the video, and, and I, I, you know, as you can see in the video, someone popped their head in to say hello to Councillor Francis while she was recording. I know, because I was in down the corridor from her, that she was running around that day, but she absolutely wanted to make time to do the video. Um, and, was squeezing it between about seven other things. So I'm sure you'll forgive her for that, but I, I wanted to share that because it is a reflection about how important she thinks this is. Um, and I think that's really important for, for people to hear. Um, and I know she would have really wanted to be with us. Um, we have got a feedback form, like all good, um, all good council officials, we wanna kind of get a bit of feedback on how could we do it better or worse. So get your camera, point it at the screen uh, and follow the QR code. Um, I think Saeed uh, put also links in the chat to the survey tool. Um, do email us directly if you've got ideas, thoughts, other things we've missed, uh, questions. Um, we're aiming to create a part of the council website for the big conversation. The team are working on that at the moment to get that up on the, uh, it'll be in the count culture section of the council's website. Um, and you will start to see more publicity about this from the 1st of June. So watch out for that. This is your kind of preview and we will, um, we will hopefully get the slide deck uh, and probably Councillor Francis video up onto the webpage uh, as well. So you'll be able to access it there as well as links to all the materials that we've uh, shared today. So thank you everyone for taking some time today. I know, uh, Many of you rejigged your diaries to join us. I'm really grateful uh, for the time you spent to us. Huge thank you to uh, Manuela and Simon and the team, uh, because there's a massive amount of work that goes into um, pulling this together at pace. So really brilliant. And thank you everyone for joining us. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Looking out across Birmingham at the moment, if I was a weather forecast, I would say it's middling to fair for this evening, but hopefully, we'll get all the rain out of the way for another Corker weekend. And if you haven't been yet, please get down to the museum uh, and see the wonderful exhibition because it's a really great time out. And I think the exhibition at Soho House is just about to open as well. So there's some brilliant stuff in the city going on. Please get out and enjoy it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you during June as part of the conversations. So have a great day, everyone, and take care. Thanks, Justin.